Directives are an important part of ASP.NET Web Forms development, and something you'll definitely see in the ASPX pages. So I'm going to talk about the page directive in this section and introduce some of the attributes you can use to do some pretty cool things once you know about them. So the page directive, you've already seen it. In fact, we briefly touched on this in the beginning of the module. But anytime you see percent at, that is a directive. So in this case, we have a percent at and then the name of the directive, which is page. And then anything after that is just an attribute of the directive. So very similar to an HTML tag that has attributes on it. Now, obviously, in this case, we're identifying the language. And that is one of the key things that the page directive does. But some other things you can do with it as well include maintain scroll bar positions. This is a pretty big deal when you have grids and maybe the user can click on the grid to select a row. And then as they do that, though, it reloads the whole page based on the action they performed. Well, then they have to scroll back down and find that selected row. It can be a little bit of a, bit of a pain. Well, you could certainly mitigate that by using some JavaScript, but using a page directive that we'll talk about, or page directive attribute, I should say, we can just with, in a, literally in a matter of five seconds, take care of that problem. Uh, page directives are also used in Visual Web Developer Express and Visual Studio in general to identify the code separation rules or the files that are used. So code file paths are identified. We can turn on some logging features referred to as tracing. If you want to see session variables, if you want to see request variables, server variables, all those types of things, you can simply add trace equals true to the top of the page directive and you'll magically get all this information spit out into the page. Now you can also turn themes at the page level on and off. So if you'd like to apply a very specific theme, which a theme really is just a kind of way to skin things, uh, different CSS files typically and you want to do that for a page, then you could say theme equals and give it the name of the theme that you've created. Master pages in ASP.NET, which is something we'll talk about later in this video course, are also identified using attributes of the page directive. So there's something called master page file that will point a page to the overall structure of how that page should look once it's rendered at runtime so that you have the consist consistent header, footer, menu, things like that. Now you can even go in and identify error pages. So if there, an error occurs in your ASPX page, uh, you can go in and say where the processing should go from there. Now here's just a brief list of some of the different attributes. So these attributes can be substituted in where it says attribute equals. And then of course you'd give it the appropriate value. So you can perform some asynchronous operations using ASP.NET. And you could say that if this page is an async or not. The code file I've already mentioned. Uh, you can identify that code separation.cs or .vb file. Enable theming. Do you want theming to be turned on or off? And you can even list a specific theme, so which you'll see down here at the bottom of the list. Uh, language we've talked about. That one's pretty simple. Specify C Sharp or VB. Tracing, as I mentioned, is the logging. Now, one of my favorites, though, that is just one of those super, super simple tricks that once you know about it, you'll use it fairly frequently is, uh, well, not the most short name attribute, but it's called maintain scroll back position on post back. Uh, you definitely know what it does by the name of that one. Uh, as a user, as I mentioned earlier, clicks on a grid, if they're, they've scrolled down, say, halfway in the page, it's a long grid, a lot of customers, for instance. And let's say they select the row. Then by default, if that posts back, it's going to put them right back at the top of the page. Well, if you simply add at the top here on the attribute equals, if you add maintain scroll back position on post back equals true, that will automatically inject a little bit of JavaScript to track where that scroll bar is. And it does that automatically for you out of the box. So that's a great feature you can leverage very easily. Now, as I've already mentioned, and in the previous section demonstrated, we have this code separation concept. And the page directive simply uses this code file attribute to specify what is the code file for the ASPX. And that way it'll point over to it. And we can do some pretty cool things there to dynamically drive from code our HTML content. Very, very nice. So that's a few of the things the page directive does. So let me show you a little bit of a demo here on what we can do with some of these attributes.
Here's an example of the page directive in a page called about.aspx. And we'll recognize it because of the percent at. There's the page directive. And then you'll notice we have several attributes that have been applied. So I'm going to space these out just a little bit better. So first off, one of the more simple ones I didn't mention earlier is the title. We can set the title of what should be rendered up in the browser's uh, title bar there. And that's very easy to set using a page directive. Of course, we already talked about you can set the language. You can set the master page that determines the overall structure of how the page will render to keep things consistent. We'll have a whole module just on that topic later in the course. Uh, this handles events and the way that page load is called, as an example. This points to our code behind. So we have our about.aspx.cs that it points to. And in that file, we have about, which derives from page. Well, our ASPX ultimately inherits from about, which in, in turn inherits from page. And that's defined by using the inherits. So you can see about there. Now there's many others you can use. In fact, if I just hit space right here, we'll get IntelliSense for all the different options. And there's quite a few. Uh, that you can set and use. Now one of the more interesting ones deals with the maintaining the scroll bars position as you post back. So let me show you a demonstration of that. So I have a page here that uses the page directive as normal, nothing new than what we just saw. And it has a server control called a grid view. Now the grid view simply is going to render some customer data from a database. So if I right click and view in browser, you'll see that the customers show up and then I can select a customer. Now if I select a customer up top here it does do a post back and you'll notice it highlights the row so no big deal you can't even really tell there's a post back if you watch up here on the tab you can see it flicker just slightly though. Okay where this is kind of a hassle is let's say the customer scrolled down this one doesn't leverage paging uh, so we'll select one down here the big cheese when I click on select, it does highlight it, but you'll notice we're taken all the way to the back, uh, back to the top of the page. But if I scroll down, it is highlighted. It's just that it did a post back and the scroll bar position was lost in the process. Well, a really, really nice end user feature to make your end users and kind of keep them happy is the maintain scroll bar position one. So we're going to come up and I'm going to say maintain scroll bar position on post back equals true. Now just by adding that single line, watch what happens here. So if we do it up top, you won't notice much because that already worked pretty well. But if we scroll all the way to the bottom and let's go find the big cheese again, select it. Look at that. It almost looks like the page didn't even reload, like it didn't do a post back. But it did. It did do a post back. What's happening is by setting the maintain scroll back position on post back to true, the web forms infrastructure, specifically the page class, automatically outputs some little bit of JavaScript to track the X and Y uh, with the X coordinate uh, if you're going this way, if you had a horizontal, or the Y coordinate if you have a vertical scroll bar, and it automatically tracks that. And so if we go into the source code here and come on down, you'll notice there's some JavaScript uh, that was injected. Here's all our grid data. And you can see that we have our vertical scroll bar position here. So scroll position Y was 1817. Didn't have an X because I didn't have a horizontal scroll bar. But that's what was added for us. And then there's a script. One of these scripts here was used to then render that and run the JavaScript. Very, very nice. All right, now another nice feature. I'm going to close this guy and we're going to go to about. This doesn't have much in it, but let's say that I would like to go in and see some logging information about the page. I want to see the request variables. Maybe I have something called a session variable or cookies, server variables, those types of things. Well, I can go in to the page directive and add another attribute called trace and just simply say trace equals true. Now, if I view in browser, a lot of code will be generated. So here's my regular page, but at the bottom of it, you'll see that this tracing attribute that we set to true puts some information into the page. So we have some timing of how long did it take during the page lifecycle to do the different stages of the page object. Uh, what controls are in this page? Shows all that information. 
we can get to sessions, application, cookies, headers, all of that type of information is easily accessible through here. You can see we have uh, server variables as well. So this makes it very easy to get information that, you know, otherwise in the old days I used to have to loop through that type of stuff and write it out. But with the trace directive, it's a piece of cake. Now there's certainly some others that we could add. I've talked about you can do theming, um, master pages I've already shown, and there's even more than that. But that's an introduction to what the page directive is and some of the attributes that you can use in your ASP.NET websites.